Okay, so can continuing with customizing the type. I'm looking at the northeast, and I just want to clean up little parts of it, like the A is needs to be smoothed. So many anchor points. The O needs to be smoothed. It's even after my, you know, adding of strokes and things. The N needs to be a little smoothed, especially because so many of the, the other letter forms I used for this are so clean. And I think I'll keep that kind of sharp edged character to the northeast. Each thing is just its its own kind of combination of lettering, right? So before we finish this, I'm looking at how the letters work with the illustration and I have full control of the words, you know, as kind of individual layer groups. I'm looking at how they overlap with with the illustration. The idea was to have it run behind the clock tower. So I think I like it a little further away. So moved back to there with the little spike of the glow going between it. And then the lake view, I can control that. I can stretch it, make it bigger. I can hold down shift to lock it, or I can let it be distorted a little bit as I stretch. I don't like how the L is fully horizontal and vertical when everything else is on a curve. So I want to see if I can space it so I can curve that. And now I'm thinking it might be cool if this runs in front of the lake view, you know, the glow. So maybe I'll just shorten it up a little bit. Uh, the opposite, maybe just like that. So it just covers the top of the E. But I don't want that spacing to be too close. This is called the letting space between lines of type. Kerning is between individual letters. Letting is between lines of type. Let's see, that looks pretty good, but it might go off a little too much to one side. So maybe I just need to shrink all of it. Yeah, I think I can get that to work. All right, so Northeast Lakeview College. And then college itself, maybe I want to, the large selection tool, rotate that a little bit, use my arrow keys, push it up, push it down. Readability, readability really matters here. All right, now I'm going to save it. This is my black shape text for assignment six, and I'm just going to turn off the eyeball on the illustration because this is what I want. I want the black shape letters all outlined and typeset and finished. It's all readable so that I can do color variations on my poster image if I want to. So I'm going to say File, Save As, and make sure it's an EPS. 
so I can move it into Photoshop. It's also good to save it as an AI file, also good to save it as an SVG. Now remember, my line art for my illustration is still there. My sketch is still there. Even my blocking sketch is still there. But the EPS is what I need to bring into Photoshop. So I can close Illustrator now. And I don't need to work in Illustrator again as long as I have these elements. So there it is. And what do I do? Well, I'm going to start my poster. So I have my blocking sketch that I did in Photoshop. Right? I'll open that up. And I can use that now to bring in all of my final elements, my final spot illustration, my coloring. And then I can add a background for a poster. I can do all that stuff. All right, so here is my blocking sketch with all the different types. I'm basically going to show you how I changed it from my blocking sketch. That was the one I chose. Let me crop it down. because I want it to be about 16 by 20. What are these tools? <laughs> I'm gonna go to my workspace and do, let's see, painting. Why do I have these weird tools? Here's my crop tool, there we go. Okay. So basically, I'm going to crop it to be 20 inches by 16, just because I got out of that to make more space. And then fit my poster sketch onto that. There we go. Come on. And now... It is cropped. I can delete all of these blocking sketch layers. Or better yet, maybe I'll just merge them all together, kind of like we do in Illustrator. I'll just say layer flatten image. And then what I'm going to do, I know it's a 16 by 20. It should be at 350 pixels per inch. So 16 by 20 by 350 pixels per inch. Then I'm going to make a new layer and fill it all with white. This will be my background white, just like for digital coloring. I'm going to double click on the background so it becomes layer zero. So I can move that on top of my blank white layer, which I like to label. And now, just like in Illustrator, I'm going to take my kind of guiding sketch and I'm going to onion skin it. I'm going to turn it down to 50%. Because this just helps me know where I think things should be placed. Okay, what, I'm, what am I going to place? I'm going to place my EPS. I'm going to drag and drop it into the Photoshop. Remember, I don't want it to rasterize. So I have to drag and drop it so that it stays a vector smart object. I'm going to hold down Shift. Or I'm not going to hold down Shift. Because in Photoshop, it's different than Illustrator. If you don't hold down Shift, it will lock its proportions. But I will hold down Option so it grows from the middle. And then I will set the type where I think it should go. And maybe for this poster, yeah, about that size, because I'll need a border. And I changed it a little bit. I shifted the lake view over a little bit. But basically, that's very much what my blocking sketch had. And then I hit return to place that smart object, right? Next, I need to find my best spot illustration. And I'm going to do the PNG. Here it is, from assignment 5. 
So there's my nicely cut out spot illustration. I think I've actually improved it since then. You can always go back, and this was my improved one. I gave a little bit of an offset color to it. So I'll be showing you things like that. And maybe you want to improve it before you move it into your poster. So I can improve everything, even my original EPS. So if you'll indulge me here, this is how these projects are designed. So just each step gets stronger and stronger. I'm going to improve it by moving this little brick piece because it bugs me. Make it a little bit thicker. Select it all. And then just move it up a little bit. To me, that's a better, better line art, right? And that's the beauty is I now save this as an EPS. Then I can go back to the coloring I've already done in Photoshop. This is in assignment five, so I find my PSD. There it is, open that up in Photoshop. La 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 la. And now I can just bring in a new EPS. So notice how that's there, there. <laughs> I just wanted to move that, but I want to keep it a vector. So I changed it as a vector, and now I resize it. Put it in its place. Hit return. Can turn off the one underneath and now it has changed and i can even move the color overlay effects to make it a, a true black instead of just a cmyk black the only problem is look at the little offset it left right that's just from my flat coloring so then i can go to my flat color layer all these layers and i can fill it in unlock it just use a brush, click the color that it's from, do it at full opacity, and just paint it in with the flat. And then all the other duotone effects and stuff on top of that will still be there. So you are not stuck with your original color. It's also good before you move your spot illustration onto your poster to see how it looks on a colored background, right? And so this might be where you want to create an offset. An offset's so easy to create. I'm just going to create my local flat color. And I'm going to, actually, I'll do it this way. I think this is how. I found a texture overlay that I liked, right? And so I'm going to duplicate that texture overlay, move it up to the very top so you can see it, and turn it to normal at 100 percent so this was kind of you know really colorful texture overlay to make this an offset i want to run it behind my illustration and just scale it up a little bit so i'm going to move it all the way to behind my flat color and then just hit command t and grow it and an offset is something that goes beyond the edge of your illustration to help it with its black line art, like if it's on a black background, to help, help that outline stand out. You can do it with layer styles. You can add strokes. This is a pretty crazy offset. But it's fun. It looks kind of 80s. I might take its opacity down a little bit. And then I might saturate using the tools we learned for compositing. So the sponge tool set to saturate. And I might make it more colorful here. 